Hey, welcome back to the Space 1975 podcast, a video cast. My name is Bob Jashanik. I'm one of the authors and the architect of this project. And uh, in case you don't already know, uh, Space 1975 is a Kickstarter project that's underway currently, and it's running until September 1st. And it's uh, to raise funds to publish an anthology of space opera stories with a 1970s twist, which is going to be a blast. And I'm really excited about the project. So today I thought I'd bring in one of my uh, co-authors, a member of the author team, to talk a little bit about his work on the project and his writing career. His name is Mark Lefebvre. Uh, he's from Canada and uh, Mark, welcome. Hey Bob, it's uh, great to hang out with you again. No, too bad we can't be in person, but still always good to hang out. That would be cool. That would be cool. I, I would like that as well. It's been it's been too long, my friend. <laughs> it certainly uh, has. But Mark, you're you're very active as an indie author and editor and publisher. You have a a, a regular podcast that you do, Stark Reflections on Publishing, which yep. has been doing a lot of good work. You've been, you've really been spreading the word about the wonders of indie publishing. Uh, congratulations and thank you for your work. Thank you. It's an honor that I get to do that. Yeah, and you've got a real love of science fiction, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, from, from the early days. Like, I'm talking original Battlestar Galactica, you know. <laughs> yes. 70s Battlestar Galactica, not the, not the new and improved one. <laughs> well, that's I'm sure. talking Bionic Man. I'm talking all of these things. Like space 1999. Are you kidding me? Like, those, those space outfits were amazing. Like, just, yeah. Such a, such, I'm so glad. Like when, when, when you came up with this project, I was just so excited when I saw it because I was like, yes, because that is when I fell in love with science fiction, right? That, that's that era that I discovered the joy and beauty and wonder of science fiction with bell bottoms and big collars and all the things, right? Absolutely. That's, that's some of the coolest uh, stuff. Back then, it, it, fashion in the seventies was unlike any fashion since. It's it, very science fiction-y, actually. When you look back, at it. <laughs> well, you come to think of it, you come to think of science fiction um, wardrobe as sort of looking like that, you know, after you've grown up with that kind of thing. <laughs> you're, you're right, and it, it really was a unique era, and and it was also um, as as I've been saying recently, I've been talking about this with some with some other authors. And it was also uh, the time when Star Trek really took off for, uh, for, yeah, yeah. for me and for a lot of people because it was syndicated at that point. And, and so you had Star Trek, you had Space 1999, like you said, Battlestar Galactica. And uh, of course, the great movie, the great breakthrough film that, that has reshaped cinema and blockbuster cinema and science fiction and space opera, Star Wars. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. And then and then getting to rediscover Star Wars when my son, 10 years ago, when he was six, and then reliving it, and then explaining to him how how, how I saw it for the very first time in Toronto. Uh, interesting anecdote is, uh, I lived in Northern Ontario, so Sudbury, Ontario, and, and we would get movies way back then. They, they would, like, you know, tra travel from city to city. Sudbury would get movies six, six months to a year after they would show in the big cities like Toronto and Montreal, right? So I was visiting with my parents, friends of the family, and we were down in Toronto, and my dad says, would well, you want to go see, it's, it's the latest Burt Reynolds movie, it was one of the Smokey and the Bandit 11 and a half or whatever, whatever that one was, or there's this other film called Star Wars, and I said, well, what's Star Wars? He says, well, it's like a Western, but they shoot the bad guys out of the sky. So I'm imagining like a Roy Rogers kind of character, John Wayne, shooting bad guys out of the sky. Like, because I didn't know what science fiction was. And my dad and my mom brought me to this movie, blew my mind. I got back home, uh, talked to my friends, but nobody had seen it. And, and so I was all excited to want to talk about this movie that I had seen and explain the cantina and all of the amazing stuff. And, and then my friends were like, yeah, whatever. We just saw the, you know, whatever the, the, the Burt Reynolds movie, you know, 10, version 10, that was just playing like last year's movie or two years ago. And so when Star Wars finally came to town, you never went to see the same movie twice because it was really, well, it was a 45 minute trip into the city for us. Uh, and it was also, um, uh, it was expensive, right? It was just ridiculous. You, you, know, you already saw that movie. You don't need to see it again. So it was like, 
<laughs> so it wasn't until my son was six that I really got to relive Star Wars. <laughs> That's a great story. I, I know a lot of people have had similar stories, similar experiences. And I know that I felt the same way about that movie for sure. It just blew the roof off of my head. I had yeah. never seen anything quite like it. I had seen science fiction on TV and science fiction movies and read a lot of science fiction books and stories, but never saw anything quite like that. It was just wah, a whole new universe. Oh yeah. Wow. That's, that's kind of the, some of the spirit that I hope to capture in this anthology. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's why I brought this team of authors together and, 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 and put, pulled in this theme and, and, and tried to, I'm trying to evoke a feeling of wonder and also maybe some cheesiness, if you want to use that term, <laughs> but some of the unique things in the 70s. It, it, was, it, was, yeah. it, was, a, it was a unique era in a lot of ways. Uh, what, one of the greatest things in the 70s was the music, right? Oh. Not that yeah. you have a love of 70s music. I adore 70s music, yeah. It's like, where to begin? When you think about the different, I mean, I'm not just talking, like, yeah, disco and stuff like that, but there was so much great rock music, and there, there's so many different styles of music that, that fulfilled the 70s up. And you go, oh, my God, that was from the 70s, too. That was from the 70s, too. I mean, again, I, these are my formative years, right? So <laughs> this, was, this was back in the, you, you press play and record on a little cassette recorder in front of the radio. And you're like, damn it, the DJ keeps talking over the front of the song. I never have a good one. Or your mom comes in. It's like, Mark, it's great. It's breakfast is ready. And you're like, ah, shh, shh, mom, mom. I mean, I still have these cassettes with all of that. I mean, that to me would be the ideal mix. If we're going to do a mix today, it's like you got to have some annoying guy talking over the, over the <laughs> song. And then you got to have a family member burst into the room. And then, and then the, the classic, shh, shh. <laughs> That's got to make it, its way into at least one of those stories, right? <laughs> I hope so. I really do. Because you're right. I, I wish that um, young people today could have a similar experience because there's nothing quite like <laughs> trying to capture, yeah, recorded, you know, try to re trying to record music on a cassette deck off of a radio station. It, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work well. Yeah, but, when uh, I probably said, Bob, I made you a mixtape. You're like, oh, my God, that must have taken you weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait for the song to be on the radio at the right time. <laughs> And you try to record like the top, the, the, the hits that are playing all one time. And, and uh, it's just, it was too much, too much hassle. But let's, uh, I have to go to music again, because Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. right? Great science fiction, uh, obviously a comic book with the movies, but then the cassette from his mom with all of that great 70s music, right? Like that's a perfect example. It was an incredible soundtrack. <clears throat> and, uh, and I think it, it, it reemphasized uh, the, the different genres that had such strong performance in that era that we don't always think of. Sometimes we, we do tend to look at the, again, to use the word, cheesier elements, maybe. But there were some wonder, I mean, there was so much great rock and so much, so much great uh, kind of southern style rock and, and also funk. Funk had a real, um, you know, yeah. uh, renaissance at that time. And glam. And, 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 and it was really the beginnings of the popularity of metal and, and it was the start of hip hop and rap. Their roots were in the seventies. Yeah. And uh, I feel like I'm on a time life commercial right now. <laughs> the greatest hits <laughs> of the seventies on CD, but. Uh, and the best of. But yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to capture here is, is you know, the music and the, uh, the, the fashion, the style of the seventies and also the, the, the historical events of that time. It was, it was a tumultuous, period and and also some of the thematic elements you know we had we had such incredible uh cinema back then we had so many great movies in the 70s and uh and and there were a lot of serious films as well as the blockbusters and there was a lot of emphasis on characterization and strong character arcs and strong thematic arcs and i just i wanted to bring some of that in too and so i i'm really looking forward to the variety of stories because i've got such a great author team and you are, you have a, I brought you in on purpose, Matt, Mark. I'm, I'm telling you, I knew from the beginning, I wanted you involved here uh, because you just have that great quirky sense of humor and that great uh, um, style that, that I wanted to have as part of this, of, of this book. So I'm, I'm glad that you were able to, to, to jump on board and be part of the team. 
I think one of the challenges is there's so, so many ideas are kicking around and I still haven't landed on the one yet. But I mean, one of the reasons I'm wearing my Spider-Man shirt today is, I mean, remember the Spider-Man's, the hokey 70s Spider-Man <laughs> cartoon, right? It was so 70s, well, maybe 60s, 70s, I guess, but but I discovered it in the 70s. And, and, and it's that the concept of the magic of science in some of the science fiction, like some of the early science fiction, the magic is like, oh, you get bitten, bitten by a radioactive disco guy or whatever, right? Like what's the, <laughs> what's the thing that can really play on that? And, and I think I, this is gonna be a really fun anthology to write for. It's gonna be a real fun anthology to read because I can only imagine what some of those other authors whose works I adore are gonna come up with. Yeah, we have a great team, and, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it as well. Um, Peter David, the, the comic book um, star author for, for so long, you know, he's, he's part of this group. Hey, I think I first read him in a Spider-Man comic book, uh, his writing. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you, have some, you, you know what I'm talking about. He, he really, oh, and he's got a great sense of humor, too, in, in addition to great character development and, and great uh, set pieces and shocking moments and surprises. Uh, he's he's part of this set, uh, of this uh, group and then also uh, uh, Craig Martell, who's a, a, a science fiction author and an indie publishing uh, guru and leader. Same with Dean Wesley Smith, also an indie publishing leader. Mr. Paul Post. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, it, oh he talk about a sense of humor. I mean, Dean yeah. really he can write some offbeat stuff and and yet some wonderful stuff. He writes a lot of uh, space opera himself. He writes these Caesar yeah. theater universe uh novels so um now you were nominated for a uh, for an aurora award right uh, which is a canadian uh science fiction science award. fiction award yeah i was nominated for an aurora award for short fiction uh mm -hmm. many moons ago i i have my aurora pin right here because i hosted this year's <laughs> from home oh, wow. i had it here but i just put it back in my closet because you usually wear it at canadian science fiction conferences because at least it's recognized um, yeah, and, and I think in the very first, uh, the very first horror story I had published was nominated, uh, or we, years, uh, years best fantasy and horror, I was um, on the honorable mentions. So wow. um, there, there's a, two of the feathers in my cap, at least for, uh, for some of the uh, notable stuff. I think um, editing the science fiction anthology Tesseract 16 was, uh, was a real exciting uh, experience for me. Uh, because again, I got to experience, you know, what you're doing is collecting all of these different pieces and then putting them together in, in, in a way that I think people are going to love. Well, you have a, I, you have a real um, uh, excellence when it comes to editing anthologies. I know I've been in some anthologies that you have edited. And in fact, I keep them nearby all, at all times. I oh my God, I love that. Oh. <laughs> Feel, feel the, the fear. fear. I mean, I think it's a great book. Fiction River, Feel the Fear, and also Feel the, feel love, the love, which is another. Uh, yeah, and your story, your love story. I mean, it, so when when you read a story that years later sticks with you, and it was the uh, your your story about love and how it was used in war was was again offbeat and yet so poignant and powerful at the same time. Just thank you. Phenomenal stuff. Yeah. I. I. I, I yeah. So um, I know that experience of, of getting to pull in these stories and go, oh, cool, how am I going to place this <laughs> to give just that, that right ride for the reader, right? Well, that's what I keep saying. Uh, it, I've been saying it so often, it might seem like a cliche, but even if I weren't writing a story for this, uh, even if I weren't working on this anthology, I would really want to read this book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's be well, when I first saw it, that's what I thought. I'm like, Oh my God, is it out yet? Can I get it? It's like, no, 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 we're, we're building it. Oh, <laughs> can I read it after I write for it? <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a fun idea and we've got a great team. And it's, it's, I just, I can't wait to see all the different perspectives that everybody brings to it. And you have such a unique perspective yourself. Um, being a Canadian as you are, you're, you will, I mean, you know, you, you have a different point of view in, in certain ways. Not I have an alien point of view to your American point of view <laughs> sometimes, yeah. <laughs> or, we could, yeah, <laughs> I'm the alien maybe to you as well. So <laughs> there could be a story there. Um, but, you know, you, you do. You have, a, you have a different point of view, a different attitude. I mean, you might have um, opinions or styles that are shaped by Canadian science fiction, perhaps. or the, the Oh, for sure. 
Now, how is how is, is science fiction as big a, a a a genre in Canada as it is in the U.S.? Oh yeah, it's huge, and we have we have some tremendous science fiction uh, writers here in Canada. I mean, again, I was just mentioning I, I I had the honor of being the master of ceremonies for the annual Aurora Awards, which is a major science fiction award. And um, I was supposed to be there in person in Calgary, but obviously the pandemic had other ideas. And I was just reminded of the of the variety of the creators that are uh, writing in Canada. And then when we studied, I studied literature in university, et cetera. And when we studied Canadian literature, Canadian literature was always sort of a, because we're so close to the U.S., which is such a powerhouse, we have define ourselves as very unique. But a lot of Canadian literature is about the landscape and, and our struggle with the land, because Canada is mostly land and just a, a bunch of people spread out close to the border where it's warm. Right. <laughs> so there's a lot of expanses in wide open spaces. So Canada and very, very much um, when you think about the exploration of the unknown and going into space where no one has gone before, that sort of thing. Canada is that there's so much space where no one has gone before. And there's s such an intimidating spaces uh where you know survivor yeah just throw them up north and for a little while see if they survive there you know what i mean that 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 sort of thing so i mean even without leaving the land there's so many great ideas um you think like john carpenter's the thing and stuff like that that takes place in a snowy <laughs> desolate uh atmosphere so there's so much that you can play off of uh, with with that. And, and I think the other thing is uh, so good science fiction is often a mirror held up to reality. So oftentimes we can step back and, and make commentary on things that you can't talk about because, you, you know, talking about religion and politics in public is like peeing your pants when you're standing in a crowd. It feels good while you're doing it, but two seconds later, you realize you've just made a mistake, right? <laughs> <laughs> So I've not heard that before, but I love it. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> it I, I stole that from somebody uh, at, at a writer's conference years ago before politics got really crazy to talk about. And um, but but with science fiction is, is that mirror. So you can make commentary on things like racism, uh, things like cultural appropriation. And Star Trek obviously did an amazing job with a brilliant writing of that, because when you go and look at a different culture that picks up on one nuance that maybe something Americans do or Canadians do or people in Europe do in different countries, right? You pick up on this one thing and you kind of put it under a spotlight, kind of like a political cartoon and you're like, kind of weird that we do that, isn't it? Right? So there's so, there's, there's so many interesting places you can go. And I guess being Canadian, we have that slightly removed view. We do understand. Uh, I speak American. I can spell color without a U or with a U. I can spell meter r e like in canada or if i'm talking to an american i can spell it er right so those are the kinds of things so we're used to that uh adaptation but, but i think we can also uh in some ways see things because we're just slightly removed from the uh, from the, the the mainstream american culture that we can kind of look at and go yeah but they don't have poutine or and their maple syrup's just not as good as ours right so that kind of stuff <laughs> Well, that's great. I, I'm glad you're bringing that point of view to, to this to this project. I, I really am, and uh, and I'm I'm glad to be working with you again. You're you're a great human being, and uh, anyone who knows you will agree. So you're you're bringing that to the project as well. Uh, I'm I'm glad. Thank you, my friend. You also do a lot of work with um, um, direct to uh, D to D to D, right? Which is a yeah, draft to digital. Yeah, digital. I'm 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 in their Waterloo, Ontario office. <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm their, uh, I'm their part-time Canadian employee. And so uh, it, it's great because I mean, some of the things I'm doing is helping, I'm doing the library series later on uh, for the Waterloo uh, Public Library. Now it was supposed to be in person, but it's going to be remote. And it's basically just helping authors figure out all of the free tools they can use through a place like Draft Digital and walking them through. Okay, so you've got your manuscript ready. It's all edited. You know, here are your choices. You can go find a publisher. Here's how you do that. Or if you want to, you know, find a, a good cover designer, et cetera, here are some ways to do it. Here's how you can get your ebook published for free. So those are, it, it's fun when you can help open someone's eyes to the possibilities, which is what good science fiction does. Yes. Well said. Well said. 
Well, you've always been an advocate for indie authors and, and I appreciate that. You've done a lot of good for a lot of people. And uh, again, I'm glad you're, you're part of this, this team. And I just, what would you say to, to anybody out there who's watching and listening right now, um, if they're considering backing this, this uh, Kickstarter campaign for Space 1975? I think they have an opportunity to be part of seeing something happen that is not only going to give fill them with the excitement that science fiction brought to us, but the satisfaction of knowing that you're allowing something cool to happen that would not happen otherwise, right? You get to be a part of this. And that to me is the most powerful thing about supporting Kickstarter is, wow, that looks so cool. I want to see it happen, right? And you can be part of it. You can get access to extra things. There's so many cool opportunities, you know, including, you know, be, be, being a walk-on character in one of the stories. Like there's so many cool elements where people can be part of it. Um, this is an opportunity that people really should uh, take advantage of because it's kind of like a once in a lifetime thing. Once it's gone, you're, you know, you know, you, you miss that opportunity. So, so don't regret that. Don't regret, you know, going to that premiere of Star Wars in Toronto when your dad says, what kind of cool movie this is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> don't go back to that old Burt Reynolds movie. Try out this new thing. It's, I'm sure you're going to love it. That's well said because if we, if we don't, uh, well, I'm sure we're going to reach our funding goal, but it, that's the only way that this book is going to become a reality. And if it does become a reality, Mark, you might get dragged in again. <laughs> we're planning to make this a regular series. I'm calling it, calling it the Decadium. So it would be a series of anthologies based on, with, science, with space opera, with uh, focusing on different decades throughout history. Ooh, so cool. I know to so many different amazing decades. Yeah, that is so cool. Just, you know, pulling in this different styles and music and themes and, and everything. So I, I'm, I'm excited about that. And, and that's another reason why I really hope people will jump on board. We're, uh, I believe, 61% funded at this point. And so, you know, we've got till uh, Tuesday, September 1st. And I hope everybody will, will jump in. And as Mark said, we've got some incredible rewards. We've got a digital crate, which I'm really excited about. It's ex maybe you might not even know about this, Mark. No, I didn't. Tell me about the digital crate. It's ex ex exclusive material from our author team, which is only available through this digital crate. And it'll be um, stories or writings of some kind or photos or other creative work. Maybe you've painted something wonderful or some kind of uh, video or just, a, just all kinds of stuff thrown together into this digital crate that you can only get through this, through this campaign. I have a video for you that's a science fiction meets fantasy that I think you're going to love for that digital crate if, I, if it's not too late to throw that in. I think people would, would, would get a good laugh out of it. Oh, I, that sounds perfect. Hold on to that. Don't, don't promise it to anyone else yet, okay? No, <laughs> it's only for this. <laughs> and you, have, you have a real wonderful touch with video, too. As, as some of our viewers might know, you've been posting some videos while you've been... Um, cooped up at home and, and working from home, uh, for example, uh, and this has a lot of 70s cred here, just the fact that you did this, but you did uh, Stuck in This House Here With You. Yeah, uh, based on the old Steelers Wheel classic. Yeah, 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 Stuck in the Middle With You. I mean, that's that's really a funny video. It Didn't it make it to, to national Canadian TV? Yeah, yeah, it did. It got onto two different uh, television programs where somebody from Ottawa CTV News uh, played it and, and just loved it. And then, of course, when we did a follow-up video, the KTEL, very 70s, KTEL compilation album, Isolation Hits, uh, and yeah, yeah uh, they, 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 they were right back at it again, like, oh, our favorite couple has produced another, <laughs> another parody. Yeah, so th that's a lot of... Now, now, the video I'm talking about predates me working with Liz, who's really the one who made it shine. This is a little bit clunkier, clunkier, but that's part of the joy of the crate, is that that hokey science fiction -y, uh, Star Trek reference. Oh, nice. You may, you may, and very, par very parody, but parody all the way. I'm really glad to hear you have something for the crate because that's, I think, my favorite reward because it's something that I would want the most if I were yeah. just a fan uh, preparing to, you know, um, uh, back this project. Just stuff that you can't get anywhere else. And it's all together in the same place. And it's just, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So, um, 
Well, that's great. Uh, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to talk to us. And thanks for being part of Space 1975. And let's get this thing funded. And uh, maybe we'll do a video of everyone when we're all done and all together cheering with happiness because we've got our 100% funding and hit all our stretch goals. Awesome. Cool. Thanks so much, Bob. Thank you. See ya.